Welcome to Sound Bites, hosted by registered dietitian nutritionist Melissa Joy Dobbins. Let's delve into the science, the psychology, and the strategies behind good food and nutrition. Hello, and welcome back to the Sound Bites Podcast. Today's episode is about the potential role of fresh avocados as part of a heart-healthy diet in overweight or obese adults, specifically a five-week crossover study published in the Journal of Nutrition in October 2019. My guest today is Patricia Bannon. She's a nationally recognized registered dietitian nutritionist, healthy cooking expert, and captivating communicator, inspiring millions of people to eat and live well. She enjoys using her culinary skills to develop recipes, shoot cooking videos, and teach clients how to make healthful changes in their lives, starting in the kitchen. And she's also a spokesperson for Fresh Avocados Love One Today. By the way, this episode is sponsored by Fresh Avocados Love One Today, and we thank them for their sponsorship and support of the podcast. Love One Today is a science-based food and wellness education program that encourages Americans to include fresh Hass avocados in everyday healthy eating plans to help increase fruit and vegetable intake and as a delicious, heart-healthy, whole food source of fiber and naturally good fats. Now, this podcast is also eligible for one free continuing education unit for dietitians, diet technicians, and certified diabetes educators through the Commission on Dietetic Registration. You can visit the show notes at soundbitesrd.com slash podcast for more information. So welcome to the show, Patricia. Hi, Melissa. It's so great to join you on your podcast. Yes, it's so nice to finally have you on. Now, we met a few years back uh, when we attended an international conference together, and I really enjoyed getting to know you. And in fact, the last time I saw you, was at a conference in Budapest in January, which seems like a million years ago. But I'd love for you to share a little bit more about your background, maybe how you became interested in nutrition, and about the work that you do today. Yeah, so I know it's amazing. Just eight months ago, we were in Budapest together and how things have changed. But glad to see you're doing great and your podcast is doing great. As for my background, I have worked in nutrition and communications for more than 20 years. And some of the things I love doing is I write for magazines, I do television interviews about healthy eating, I write blog posts and recipes for my website, and through this COVID experience, I just finished a 100,000-word manuscript for my latest book, so that's going to be out next year. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Um, Another thing I love doing is serving as a spokesperson for like-minded food companies and commodity boards, such as Love One Today. So today, I'm super excited to share with you some fresh avocado research that contributes to this growing body of evidence supporting the consumption of fresh avocados as a nutritious and satisfying food choice. Excellent. Well, I'm really excited to talk all things avocado, but you know, I am curious. I don't know if I've ever heard your story about how you got interested in nutrition. You know, I was, as as I think many um, dietitians may have experienced, I was an overweight child and it was challenging for me. And when I hit high school, I started dieting and I lost weight for the first time and I felt great. But I started to get into this cycle of then my weight would plateau and it would get more difficult. And I I fell prey to all of the trends and all of those things and you don't know what to follow. And I started to get on a less healthy avenue. And I met with an epidemiologist at the time and I started to get interested in nutrition. And when I went to college, I was actually accepted in a major in marketing and public relations, which I then ended up pursuing as a dietitian later in life, Mm -hmm. Um, but I took a nutrition course. And in taking the nutrition course, I thought, you know, I just want to know what is the healthiest thing for me? Um, How can I maintain my weight in a healthy way? I wanted to get away from all of the confusion and the trendy things and also create clarity for other people. And I really, freshman year of college, just loved those courses and got into it. But I think because I first got accepted into that marketing and public relations and that whole communications world. Also, I was just always drawn to. So I ended up combining it with communications, um, working in media and working with companies. I don't know that I knew that about your background. And I did 
think maybe you were a second career dietitian, but that makes sense with your combination with public relations and communications and pairing those two together. Um, it's a perfect fit, right? Yeah, yeah. And so my first job was actually at a public relations agency, and then I did the Tufts Nutrition Communication Program. So that really mm. combined the communications with the nutrition science. Fabulous. Wonderful program. Okay, great. Well, let's jump into this research study, and then we'll discuss some practical tips and takeaways for our listeners. So the title of the study is a bit of a mouthful, mm. but it is a moderate fat diet with one avocado per day increases plasma antioxidants and decreases the oxidation of small, dense LDL in adults with overweight and obesity, a randomized controlled trial. And as I said, it was published in the Journal of Nutrition in October 2019, and it was supported by the Avocado Nutrition Center as part of the Love One Today education program. So Patricia, even as a registered dietitian, that, that title's kind of a lot to take in. So could you share some maybe background information on maybe why the study was conducted and what the researchers were looking for? Yes, absolutely. So yes, that title is a mouthful and a lot to digest. So I think the best place to start is that this research was actually conducted as a follow-up to an initial avocado nutrition center study of a similar design and population. So it was a five-week crossover study on 45 overweight or obese adults. And what the researchers found was the participants who ate an avocado a day as part of a moderate fat diet had reduced total cholesterol and bad LDL cholesterol, and they had an improved ratio of total cholesterol to good HDL cholesterol levels as compared to the participants who did not consume an avocado on either a low-fat diet or a moderate-fat oil diet. So while the conclusions from any single study, as we know, you know, they don't generalize to a larger, more diverse population, the study does support this growing body of evidence demonstrating that avocados are a heart-healthy fruit. And these findings may sound a little more familiar to our listeners who do think of avocados in terms of heart health. Yes, I think many of our listeners have heard that avocados are a heart healthy fruit and their five grams of monounsaturated fats may help lower LDL or that bad cholesterol, which can lower risk for heart disease and stroke. And it sounds like that initial study supports this information. Are these findings what inspired further investigation? Yeah, exactly. So aside from those primary findings that I just discussed in the first study, interestingly, the researchers also saw that the inclusion of one fresh avocado per day as part of a moderate fat cholesterol lowering diet had additional benefits on lowering small dense LDL and lipoprotein remnants in those overweight and obese participants compared with the lower fat diet as well as the macronutrient and fatty acid match diet. And this last part is really important to reiterate because it means that these findings were seen not only when compared to a diet with less fat, but also a diet that had similar macronutrient and even fatty acid content as the avocado eating group. And the way the researchers matched those fatty acid contents with through using a high oleic oils that provided a similar unsaturated fats as the avocados. Great. So definitely an important detail to note and, you know, brings up the question of what components or maybe combination of components specific to avocados might confer these benefits. You know, I think people may be familiar with LDL being the bad cholesterol, but could you explain a little bit more about this small dense LDL specifically? Yes, of course. So let me explain that. So these small dense LDL particles have a higher susceptibility to oxidative modification. And oxidative modification of LDL particles plays a really important role in atherosclerosis due to cholesterol accumulation and buildup in the arteries. High plasma circulating oxidized LDL concentration is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Okay, great. So is this where the antioxidant component comes into play? Yes, exactly, Melissa. So the plasma antioxidant concentrations, on the other hand, have been inversely associated with cardiovascular disease risk. 
and dietary antioxidant vitamins, polyphenols, and other bioactive components from foods like fruits and vegetables and nuts have been a focus of nutrient research because of their role in lowering oxidative stress and protecting LDL from oxidation. So antioxidants such as vitamin C and vitamin E and lutein help protect cells from the damage caused by these free radicals. And when it comes to avocados, they contain 4% of the daily value for vitamin C, 6% of the daily value for vitamin E, and 136 micrograms of lutein per serving. Now, lutein doesn't have a dietary reference intake. So we're not as familiar with exactly how much we should have. But interestingly, a recent research review in the European Journal of Nutrition indicates there is growing interest in setting intake recommendations for these non-essential dietary bioactives like lutein that can help promote our optimal health and or prevent chronic diseases. I know we've talked about lutein with regard to avocados in previous episodes on the podcast, but so for listeners who are less familiar with the term you mentioned bioactives. Can you define that for us? So yes, so the Office of Dietary Supplements at the National Institutes of Health has defined bioactive components as constituents in foods or dietary supplements other than those needed to meet our basic human nutritional needs, which are responsible for changes in health status. So using lutein as an example, the average American adult has an intake of only one to two milligrams of lutein per day, which may not be enough to attain those associated health benefits. And this is one of the reasons why a recommendation may be useful for consumers. True. Very true. So interesting. Okay. So while avocados are, you know, they're known for their good unsaturated fats for heart health, there might actually be some more beneficial components at play. This is great news. So now that we have some good background information, let's discuss the study methodology. Yes. So as I mentioned, this was a five-week randomized crossover controlled feeding trial, and it was conducted with 45 men and women aged 21 to 70 years with overweight or obesity and elevated LDL cholesterol levels. So it started off with a two-week run-in diet, which was designed to mimic an average American diet. And this was provided to the participants when they started. And this was actually similar in the total fat content as the moderate fat and avocado diets, but it was higher in saturated fat versus unsaturated fat comparatively. It was also lower in fiber at 17 grams versus the 25 to 35 grams in the other diets, and also lower in bioactives as we discuss. So these differences were unfortunately reflective of well an average American diet. So the participants were then randomly assigned to a treatment sequence of three diets for five weeks each, with a two-week compliance break between the diet periods. And the three cholesterol-lowering diets all contained only 6 to 7% of saturated fatty acids compared to the average American diet, which clocks in at about 13% saturated fatty acids. Mm. And the reduction in saturated fatty acids was achieved by replacing 6 to 7% of energy from saturated fatty acids with carbohydrates from grains in the low-fat diet or from monounsaturated fatty acids in the two moderate-fat diets. Now, these two moderate fat diets included similar foods, and they're matched for macronutrients and fatty acids, with the primary difference being that the avocado diet included one fresh Hass avocado per day, while the moderate fat diet mainly used high oleic acid oils to match that fatty acid content of the one avocado. Okay, great. And so what did the researchers find? So by adding that avocado, the researchers noted an increased blood antioxidant levels and decrease the oxidation of the small, dense LDL cholesterols compared to those who ate the low and moderate fat diets. And what's interesting is the oxidized LDL lowering effect of the avocados did not appear to be due to the fatty acids since that moderate fat diet with the matched fatty acid profile did not lower the oxidized LDL. So additionally, the change in oxidized LDL was correlated with a change in the number of small, dense LDL particles, but not the large, buoyant LDL, especially for the avocado diet. 
And these findings suggest that avocados may decrease oxidized LDL by a mechanism that involves decreasing small, dense LDL, which again, are these small, dense LDL particles that may have a higher susceptibility to that potentially harmful oxidative process. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. So are there any study limitations we should consider? Yes, and that's always a great question to ask. And as with all research, there are limitations to consider, including it was a relatively short duration of the diet intervention. The analytical method used to quantify one of the oxidative biomarkers and the small subset sample size for assessing aspects of gene expression. So a longer term diet intervention in measuring additional biomarkers of oxidative stress, inflammation, and antioxidant capability would be really helpful to further understand the effect of avocados on inflammation and endothelial function. Very interesting. Well, that's a lot of information to digest, as we said earlier. So maybe for the listeners, could you try to summarize maybe some of the key takeaways, perhaps taking both studies into account? Absolutely. It is a lot of information. So essentially, the first study is suggesting that avocados may have a beneficial role in lowering cholesterol, but they also saw potential for additional effects regarding antioxidant potential and lowering small, dense LDL specifically. So the more recent study explored those potential effects and saw that indeed those who ate the avocado a day showed higher blood antioxidant levels and lower small dense LDL levels, even when comparing it to the diet with a similar nutrient and fatty acid profile. So essentially, in addition to our well-known good monounsaturated fats in avocados known for heart health, this research suggests that those phytosterols and other bioactives may also make a beneficial impact as well. So further research is needed to determine which bioactives in avocados contribute to this reduction in oxidized LDL. But it is an exciting and growing aspect of cardiovascular health that's definitely worth exploring. It certainly is. Fascinating. Okay. I love hearing about how the research is evolving, even around you know really well-researched subjects like heart health. As a dietitian, I'm sure you've had to work with people to help them really value the importance of heart health, especially if they're younger or don't have a family member or loved one who has been affected. Is there any advice perhaps for some of our fellow dietitians that might be listening to help them convey the importance of heart health at any age or stage of life? Yes, absolutely. So let's first just look at some of the statistics. We're all aware probably that heart disease is the leading cause of death for men and women and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the United States, ages 20 years and older. And to put that into context, that's about 647,000 Americans dying from heart disease each year. And that's one in every four deaths. And for decades, we've seen progress in this fight against heart disease. You know, while it remained the number one killer in men and women in the United States, the rates were steadily declining since the 1960s. And that is until recently, because according to an August 2019 study in the International Journal of Epidemiology, there was a substantial slowdown in that rate of decline of cardiovascular disease mortality in many high-income countries in recent years, including the United States. So interestingly, when looking at what is known as the GBD, or global burden of diseases, injuries, and risk factors, essentially the risk factors for cardiovascular disease are ranked in order of mortality from 2007 to 2017. And quite a few of those have shifted over the past 10 years. But what remains number one is dietary risks. It has remained at the top spot. Wow. Okay. Thank you for sharing those numbers and those deeper insights, if you will. So clearly diet is and has been a key risk factor for heart disease. And I think many dietitians and the public as well are pretty aware of the common components of you know, a heart healthy diet. But are there any specific dietary patterns shown in the data that might be especially putting Americans at risk? Yes. Yeah, so taking a closer look at this GBD information, the top three individual dietary risks attributable for deaths by cardiovascular disease were diet low in whole grains, followed by high in sodium, then a diet low in fruit. 
And although sodium, sugar, and fat have been our main focus of the diet in the past two decades, this data suggests there may be an opportunity to educate around the importance of eating fruit. And what's great is that this ladders nicely back to the research that we just discussed, since many fruits offer so many of these heart-healthy nutrients like fiber, antioxidant vitamins, and minerals, and uniquely in the case of avocados, those healthy unsaturated fats as well. Mm -hmm. I always love when we can focus on things to increase and include in our diets to help promote health. And so many beneficial nutrients in fruits and vegetables. We know this. And in fact, the dietary guidelines recommend, you know, depending on your age and calorie level, one to three cups of vegetables a day and one to two cups of fruit a day. And, you know, we hear this statistic a lot, but nine out of 10 Americans are not getting enough fruits and vegetables. We're definitely falling short. Yes, we are definitely falling short. And so based on data from the What We Eat in America, which is the dietary intake interview components of the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, or NHANES, about three-fourths of the population consume less than the sex and age-specific recommended target. So for context, as of the 2015 to 2016 finding, adults over 20 years old only average 0.9 cup equivalents of fruit intake which is less than the one to two cup equivalents that's recommended. Right. So interesting to discuss how impactful the diet is when it comes to heart health, yet how lacking we are in our intake of some key foods and nutrients, and even more reason for research to continue and for dietitians to stay up to date on the research and continue to communicate about heart healthy eating. So putting all of this information from the research to the statistics and the facts that we've talked about, putting this into action, I was hoping we could share some simple heart healthy tips that may be actionable advice for our fellow dietitians who counsel clients or for anyone listening to use for themselves. Yes. So it's so important that we understand the research, but then how do we translate those into those small steps, you know, people can actually make to improve their heart health. And one thing I think we can all focus on is swapping good fats for typical sources of saturated fats, such as swapping mayonnaise for avocado, swapping butter for olive oil, swapping potato chips for nuts, swapping red meat for fish. And in addition to providing healthy fats, avocados also add fiber along with a creamy texture to recipes, which is one of the reasons I love adding them to my smoothies. I also love adding them to baked goods like brownies, muffins, or cookies because they give a boost of nutritional content and a texture enhancement. So there's no deprivation in using them, which I think is really important. Um, but when it comes to communicating these messages, you know, for me, if I'm on a TV segment or if I'm doing a blog post or in social media, you know, how do we entice people with images or fun videos that really bring these simple tips to life? I think that's where the creativity in our field is really key. And I think it's also important that we know who is our audience, you know, who are we talking to and what do they care about? Is heart health top of mind? We all know there's a lot of stresses in our life right now. So unless they're going through something specific to heart disease, it's probably not top of mind. Um, so, you know, who are they and what do they care about? Are they a mom? Are they a millennial? Are they an athlete? Are they a health professional in a more clinical or outpatient setting? So if it's an athlete, for example, maybe we focus on how the heart healthy food can improve their performance. Or if it's a millennial, many of who are foodies or food adventurers, you know, maybe we focus on a cool culinary technique like baking an egg in an avocado and topping it with fresh herbs. Or for a health professional, you know, many of the listeners of this podcast, I think that's when we can really dive more into the research like we've discussed today. Mm -hmm. Great points. Thank you, Patricia. So as you mentioned, having healthy food choices, especially trendy ones like avocados, that can be a great entry point for getting people excited about adopting healthy eating habits. As the outdoor temperatures of getting cooler here, soup is one of my favorite foods. So I wanted to share that I saw this recipe for heart healthy slow cooker avocado lime chicken soup on the Love One Today newsletter, and I immediately printed it out. In fact, I made it yesterday and it was really yummy and it was really easy. So we'll be sure to link to that in my show notes and take you over to the Love One Today website to get that if anybody else is a soup lover like I am. You know, and I've tried a couple of other soup recipes where you add sliced avocado, 
Um, and this one in particular, um, you add the diced avocado in there. But I found out on the Love One Today website that you can actually puree avocado into the soup. And that adds, you know, not only the good fats and fiber, and that makes the soup more filling, but it also adds this rich flavor and creamy texture too. So Patricia, I wanted to find out what some of your favorite ways to enjoy avocados are. Yes. Well, I do love them pureed in soups and it's getting chilly where you are, but I'm in Southern California. So it's still a (laughs) bit hot here. So I'm still using those avocados and things like smoothies um, because they do give that boost of nutrition as well as that creamy texture. I also like using them in popsicles and a little tip here as a money saver and time saver is you can freeze avocados and in using them in smoothies and popsicles, it's great to have some in the freezer. It's a cost saver. You can buy them on sale and freeze them. Mm -hmm. But other ways I love using them is just adding them to a hummus for a boost of fiber and healthy fats. I like adding them to salad dressings. Um, But I have to say right now in our household, I have a three-year-old daughter and she just likes sliced it in half, take a spoon, maybe sprinkle a little sea salt or lime juice. Probably every day my daughter asks for an avocado with a spoon. Mm. So it really doesn't get any more simple than that. Right. Well, we keep things really simple here at my house. And that's adorable that she asks for the the avocado and a spoon. Um, You know, we just scoop them out, slice them, like you said, maybe a little bit of salt or lime juice. But I'll have to try some of your maybe fancier recipes or tips. And on the last episode, we did discuss freezing avocado, which was news to me. So there's all kinds of great tips and information on choosing a ripe avocado, how to tell if it's ripe, and also how to freeze avocados. We'll make sure to have all the links to that in the show notes as well. But yeah, we put avocado slices on just about anything, eggs or toast in the morning, sandwiches, tacos, you know, it's just simply eating it as is like your daughter does. So in addition to including some of the tips and resources that we talked about in my show notes at soundbitesrd.com, where can people find out more about the research we discussed and other resources? So you want to check out the health professional tab at loveonetoday.com, where you can find out about the research we talked about today, as well as summaries of other trials. There also is a variety of free educational materials, including a new downloadable health professional handout specific to avocados and heart health, and a full color healthy swaps for the heart cookbook. And the cookbook is a great treat for yourself and your clients. It's full of tasty, easy to make recipes. And loveonetoday.com also has a quarterly newsletter exclusively for health professionals, which I recommend subscribing to because it's going to include that latest research, nutrition info, tips and tricks with fresh avocados, as well as updates on exciting CEU opportunities like your podcast. Right. And that's where I found this delicious, wonderful recipe. So I definitely encourage people to sign up for the newsletter as well and check out loveonetoday.com. Well, thank you so much, Patricia, for sharing all of this valuable information with me and the listeners. And if you're listening and you loved this avocado episode, be sure to go back and check out episodes 158 and 150, where you'll hear my interviews with Marissa Moore. The first one was on weight management and the gut microbiome. And the second one was about cognitive health in the overweight or obese adult population. And of course, as always, a wealth of additional tasty avocado tips and tricks like how to freeze an avocado. So also want to remind everybody that this episode is eligible for one free continuing education unit, as I said earlier, for dietitians, diet technicians, and certified diabetes educators through the Commission on Dietetic Registration. So stay tuned for the final episode of this series coming up later this fall, where I will interview another expert on all things avocado and diabetes management. So thanks again, Patricia. Thank you, Melissa. It's been great having you on. And for everybody listening, as always, enjoy your food with health in mind. Till next time. For more information, visit soundbitesrd.com. Music by Dave Burke, produced by JAG in Detroit Podcasts.